What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. There is so much happening right now with the MCU. Deadpool and Wolverine set up many different important things for the MCU and then of course we have the announcement that Doctor Doom is coming to the MCU played by Robert Downey Jr. Now with the announcement that Robert Downey Jr. was returning to the MCU and playing Doctor Doom, we also got the announcement that the next Avengers film is going to be Avengers Doomsday, not Avengers King Dynasty. And it does seem like Marvel Studios is already at this point in time completely done with Kang. Based off of what we've just heard and what we're about to break down, it seems like we might not ever see Kang again, at least not the same version or variants that we've seen already in the MCU. No Jonathan Majors Kang, no recast of Kang, but simply the character right now is gone altogether. It doesn't seem like Marvel Studios even has plans for a quick little Kang cameo or a quick little wrap up of how he is no longer a threat or no scene planned like Dr. Doom taking Kang's technology or taking something from Kang with Kang actually being there. There's always some off chance that he could find Kang technology just on its own. Like the 10 rings, we all, at least in the past, knew that they were Kang technology. The same thing goes for the bangles that Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel have right now. We knew that was supposed to be Kang tech as well. Who knows what route they're gonna go down as far as retconning those items, but perhaps Doctor Doom could run into items like that that give him more power. But let's dive into this article titled, Here's How Marvel Studios Plans to Write Kang Out of the MCU Leading into Avengers Doomsday. And also with this report, we get an idea of what Marvel Studios next plans are now. Since obviously they have formulated some type of a plan to move away from Kang, they have also formulated a plan of how they are going to do that. And it involves the X-Men and it involves Deadpool's timeline. This is a great article by comicbookmovie.com and they are talking about some news that Alex Perez from the Cosmic Circus has recently revealed and Alex was right about a lot of scoops and leaks for Deadpool and Wolverine. So it starts with a quick little recap and I have to say I am kind of disappointed that Marvel Studios isn't going to follow through with any of the Kang storyline. I am really excited that Robert Downey Jr. is returning to play Doom. I think it's a really awesome twist and I think it does show the full potential of the multiverse. Taking one character, Tony Stark, who is the hero, who is literally the savior of our universe, the 616 universe, then going into a different universe where he is a villain and having him be the main villain and fight some Avengers that used to fight with the good Tony Stark. That is the full potential of the multiverse right there. I love it. However, I really would have liked to see Kang's story be completed. And honestly, I still would. I would love for Majors to come back and finish the story as Kang. And he's recently commented on the fact that Robert Downey Jr. was cast as Doctor Doom. And we'll get into that in just a bit. But it does a quick recap in this article, basically talking about when we meet he who remains in Loki. That person, he who remains slash Kang slash Nathaniel. Richards, he is the only Kang. He killed everybody else and secluded his timeline, the sacred timeline, and he pruned any branch timelines that came from the sacred timeline. So after the multiversal war, this Kang, he who remains, was the only one left standing. The end of Loki caused a bunch of Kang variants to come out, but then at the end of Loki 2, we found out that that was pretty much all a part of he who remains' his plan. But Loki refused to let this happen. So instead, Loki essentially created a new multiverse powered by, well, himself. And this gave everybody true free will and the TVA no longer prunes timelines. Instead, what we learned at the end of Loki season two, they would simply look out for Kang variants and they would prune Kang. It was even shown to us at the end of Loki season two that Kang in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was detected by the TVA, but they said the Avengers in that universe took care of him. So they didn't have to go physically take care of that Kang variant. And a lot of people really didn't believe that the Kang we saw in Quantumania was dead. Neither did I. We all believed that he was going to come back in a big way. Plus, not to mention the post credit scene for that movie really set up Kang in a huge way with all of those different variants. And if you are hoping for Marvel Studios to kind of finish this story, well, it sounds like we're all out of luck on that front. Because according to Alex Perez from thecosmiccircus.com, right now the idea for the MCU and Kang is that Kang is just simply gone. The TVA does their job and they get rid of Kangs. All variants get taken care of. And yeah, there are several problems with this really, especially to us fans who really wanted to see this story play out, but it is the most 
simple way to kind of move on. And it seems like that's what Marvel Studios has decided to do. And even though it is simple, it does offer a solution as to why he's no longer a threat. The TVA simply takes care of it. And we can assume that Loki can monitor all of the multiverse. So even if a variant of Kang snuck by the TVA, Loki could see them and inform Mobius or B-15 or whoever. So it seems like that is kind of the plan right now. But Alex Perez does also give us a little bit more details of what Marvel Studios had slash has planned. And it specifically involves Deadpool's timeline, the 1005 timeline, an Avengers vs. X-Men storyline, and that post credit scene from The Marvels where Monica Rambeau ended up in a different universe. We're about to dive into all of this, but first, I want to talk to you about a game that I really never thought twice about. I used to think it was pretty generic. I used to think it was pay to win, but now I've actually come to enjoy it quite a bit. And if you've been following the channel, you probably already know that I played this game. We're talking about Raid Shadow Legends, the sponsors of today's video. And a lot of people think that this game is a time grinder, but it is not. It actually has an auto battle mode, which saves a ton of time and is something that I really enjoy about it. Again, a lot of people think it's pay to win. I thought so myself, but there is so much content in this this game there is so much free content to be played you can have a ton of fun for free and it really is challenging and has so much you can do they have 800 plus champions 16 factions 1 million plus builds 30 plus bosses and they constantly do updates every month plus you can play cross-platform and play with your friends and family in your own clan so to start playing click the link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses available only via my link you'll immediately get a huge starter pack with an epic champion Tayrell from the High Elves faction. And many people believe that Tayrell is the very best epic that you can get. Plus you get another starter pack after reaching level 25 that includes an epic Rector Drath, one of the strongest support epics. So hit the link or scan the QR code and find me under my name, Cosmic Warren, and join my clan, Cosmic Wonders. So Alex Perez states that the early plans were for the Earth 616 Avengers to travel through the multiverse, eventually arriving on Earth 10,005. So essentially, the Avengers would go to Deadpool's universe because that was established in Deadpool and Wolverine. And here's what's really interesting. Alex says that is because that is where Monica Rambeau is supposed to be right now. And this would make sense because in Deadpool's universe right now, during the time that he is in, the X-Men are all still alive. Remember, Logan's death doesn't happen until years in the future, and it might not even happen anymore since they kind of already know what is supposed to happen. Maybe Deadpool and the main Wolverine from Deadpool and Wolverine can save the other Logan. Because I've heard some people try to say that they're the same Logan. They are not the same. This Wolverine was clearly taken from a different universe. We saw Deadpool go to a lot of different universes until he found this Wolverine who let down his world because all of the X-Men died. He wasn't there to save him. Then he went on a killing spree, killing the bad and some good people as well. So Deadpool stripped him from his universe. And then at the end of Deadpool and Wolverine, they ended up back in the 10,005 universe, which means there are now two Logans in that universe. So the biggest point here is that the X-Men are all still alive and well in this universe, in the 10,005 universe, which which means the Marvel's post credit scene that we saw where Monica Rambeau ends up in another universe where she sees Beast, where she sees her mother, who's not her mother in that universe, and where Professor X is mentioned, that is Deadpool's universe. It's obviously these X-Men's universe as well, but it's the universe we just saw in Deadpool and Wolverine. And this is supposedly at least before the announcement that Robert Downey Jr. was returning as Doctor Doom, it was supposedly going to lead to an Avengers versus X-Men story because of the incursions that make these two universes collide. Now, this is something that we have been speculating about on the channel for a while now. It would make sense that that's how those two universes come in contact with each other, an incursion. And it would also make sense as to why the X-Men would be pitted against the Avengers, because when an incursion happens, like we explained in a couple of videos ago, the only way to prevent the destruction of your world is to destroy the other. In every universe, Earth is the center of it. So when two universes start to incur with each other, it's the two Earths of those universes who see each other first. And when they smash into each other, that is the destruction of the universe. So the only way to prevent your universe from dying is to destroy the other Earth. So obviously that's how you would get an X-Men versus Avenger storyline. One team goes to the other Earth and figures out what's going on. And they say, hey, well, we got to kill one of these universes and it's not going to be mine. So y'all jump ship, come to ours and we're going to blow yours up. That just seems like it's going to lead 
lead to a big fight. And this is something that we actually could see happen in Avengers Doomsday. Again, Alex Perez states that these were the plans before the Doctor Doom announcement, but I do believe, like in the comics, Doctor Doom could be trying to prevent the multiverse from being destroyed. But in turn, doing that, he ends up destroying a lot of universes that are incurring on others. So perhaps the Avengers fight the X-Men, and much like normal versus films, the two teams end up being on the same team to go up against a common villain, who would be Doctor Doom. And that's what I think is going to be the current plans right now for Marvel Studios. Unfortunately, that means the removal of Kang. And like I mentioned, Jonathan Majors has responded to Robert Downey Jr. being cast as Doom and Kang essentially being gone. TMZ actually saw him and stopped him on the street and asked him what he thought about this news and he said that he was heartbroken of course. He says, I love him. I love Kang. Doctor Doom is wicked though. Then they asked him if he felt his treatment was fair compared to fellow Marvel stars like Robert Downey Jr. and the Flash star Ezra Miller who have faced their own legal issues. Major said this, I think it's fair that Mr. Downey is being and has been greeted with patience and curiosity and love, and that Mr. Miller has gotten the same treatment and that they are being allowed to work their art and be creative at that level. That's really big of him to say he's certainly handling it well, at least publicly, and their instances were obviously different, but I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I don't really think it's fair. Maybe right now it's just a little too soon for Marvel to give Jonathan Majors another chance, I'm not really sure, but I would have loved to see him continue on as Kang, but just my opinion. I think the MCU can definitely recover from this. I think Robert Downey Jr. as Doom is definitely going to get people's attention it already has and i think if executed properly can be an amazing film but go ahead let me know what you think about this in the comments down below do you like it do you not and how do you feel about kang kind of simply being just done with now leave your thoughts in the comments please don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all things relating to the mcu you can find us on apple Podcasts, spotify instagram twitter and facebook and as always thank you all so much for watching wolf wolf